Hello, it's Grace, welcome back. Let's do a reading vlog. Hello, how are you? I hope you're all doing well. Today is the 1st of October. We are officially in the autumn season, I feel. The weather is very much autumnal and I'm gonna do a reading vlog, reading some dark academia books. I mentioned this in a recent video that that is something that I wanted to do. It feels like the right time of year for dark academia. I really love dark academia. One of my favorite books of all time is The Secret History and I am excited. So I'm not 100% what books I'm gonna be reading, yet but we will see as i go along i have my first one here which i'm going to be starting today um and it is black chalk by christopher j yates um i don't really know much about this it just came up a lot in the um recommendations it says it's a compulsive page turner um a game of consequence and a game of forfeits to be played by six best friends in their first year at oxford university but then the game changed the stakes grew higher the dares more humiliating and the results tragic now 14 years later the remaining players must meet again for one final round sounds very very good i love like a dark game um i like that it's set in england i feel like a lot of the dark academia that i've read is set in america so that's interesting in oxford haven't heard of this author before uh, and yeah it said it was like really twisty quite dark i'm excited about it it's gonna be book number one and i like it because although it seemed to be on all the articles haven't heard anyone on booktube ever talk about it so if it's good then i'll have a good old recommendation for everyone i am freezing cold um i have been working this morning now i need to go into town because i'm getting my nails did um i've actually loved having this color for the past month it's so i just I think it's really pretty nice but it's autumn so i'm gonna go for like a nice autumnal like dark nail so as i travel up to town i'm gonna take black chalk and start reading it okay so obviously dark academia i'm only interested in the books but there's a whole aesthetic out there let's see how i'm doing today um it's cold so I have this coat on and a scarf big baggy trousers my pages i feel like i could be off to a lecture somewhere and then maybe to murder a man in a field who knows Oh, I got my nails done. Aren't they pretty? Um, I'm running late. Now I'm out of breath because I ran up the stairs. Just filmed an event for Durham Book Festival. And now, sorry if you hate eyelash curling, by the way. This might be a problem for you in this clip. Yeah, one well, of my best friends who lives in Sheffield is in Newcastle. So I'm going to go meet her for a drink. And then Alex's mum and stepdad are coming to stay with us for the weekend. So they're arriving later. So probably the only opportunity I'll have. So out of breath, bish. You unfit to update you is on the book is now. I'm 50 pages into Black Chalk and I'm enjoying it. It's very intriguing. We are with one character in New York 15 years, I think, after he's left university and he's like very strange. He's a hermit, hasn't left the house in three years because he's scared that someone from his past was looking for him. But then at the start of the novel, this guy calls him and is like, we don't know who this character is, by the way, like of a name or anything. So I think that's going to be potentially twisty. One of the guys from his past from university calls him and is like, we're starting the game again. So then we flip between him in New York and he has all these like, I find it really interesting, these things to remind him to do stuff. So he has like six glasses of water in his living room to remind him to drink six glasses a day. And he'll walk to the kitchen and there's like a salad bowl and he's like salad dressing. Oh yeah, I haven't got any clothes on. And he has all these things that tell him how to live his day and he's really stressed about seeing this friend again and he talks about how the game went wrong and he did something bad and now it's like come back to find him and then we spend time in oxford in the past where two main boys chad and jollyan strange name um, and then another boy jack start this game that's basically like a psychological game where they force each other to do these consequences that are like not necessarily illegal not physically taxing but are like psychologically stressful and whoever does the most will win and will win all this money so we're kind of seeing how the game's being set up and they're trying to think who else to include in it because they said they'll have six people so that's kind of the setup so i'm very intrigued about the game and i'm enjoying it it's very easy to read fast paced but i think i think it's pretty well well written i feel like people have said like oh just because something's dark and set at a university doesn't mean it's dark academia i don't think this book's going to put be particularly dark academia in the sense that you know it's engaging with like classics and studying necessarily but it's set at university and it's dark 
and I'm excited to keep reading it because I think it's going to be weird and also I read in one review that it has like a massive twist at the like 25% point um, and you may know about me that if I read something has a big twist in I then have to have to read the book so I'm trying not to do too much like guessing what it's going to be because I think that can sometimes like ruin the experience of the twist so I'm trying not to do that but I have already have already started theorizing that in my head I can't really I can't really stop myself so yeah that is my frantic update again apologies if you don't like watching people curl their eyelashes every time Alex watches me do it he's like that's disgusting like why are you like clamping your eye with a metal instrument which I can understand that don't get me wrong I can appreciate that but it's the only way that this gal can get a nice mascara that's the sketch really gonna get changed because it's bloody freezing outside and then go to the pub with my friend hello i filmed uh, nothing last night and i'm not gonna read anything today because we're just spending the day with al's mum and stepdad so get ready for a montage also put the table tennis table down finally i forgot what it was like to actually have a place to eat things Sunday afternoon. I uh, had a really nice weekend as you might have seen from the montage. A lot of drinking, a lot of eating delicious food. I had a really nice time uh, and they've left now so we're just having a chill Sunday and I have been reading Black Chalk and I'm now like 160 pages in and I'm really enjoying it. It's really fun um, and definitely very mysterious. There was a kind of twist like pretty early on but I had guessed it. I think I'd kind of alluded to that earlier that like I thought that basically you were reading from the perspective of someone and you were kind of being led to believe it was one person, but I was like, oh, I don't, I don't think it's them. Um, so I'm not really, because it was so early on, I, I, it didn't like disappoint me that I guessed it. Um, I just I felt super smart. Um, but since then, yeah, we're still on this timeline where we have like one guy's perspective, the kind of hermit guy who's living in New York. And that is getting like increasingly weird. He clearly has like memory problems. He can't really, he's trying to like write this story of what happened to them in the past when they were at university but it's written in a kind of like strange fragmented style there's a lot of stuff that he doesn't remember and then there's like the introduction of this person who's like visiting his house and we're not sure who she is and she's kind of like writing the story as well and she seems really weird and it's all very mysterious and very fun because i have no idea what's going on so i like that and then the parts that are at the university we're getting into like the game they're doing all these they have to do these consequences which are like increasingly psychologically they're basically like really embarrassing or like they're becoming a bit more like hurtful things that they have to do like to get their money back or to win this money um and i think that's really yeah interesting i like seeing all of that play out and you know tensions are rising as you would assume they would so i think i'm looking forward to keep reading it because there's just so much stuff that's gonna have to be explained and so i think there's good potential for like some more twists and i'd say like the characters so the six people who are playing this game are they're definitely interesting um i wouldn't say it's like on a level where i'm like really really invested i really feel like i know the characters i really not that i don't know them but maybe that i don't believe them i don't know that it's not i kind of i guess because i'm kind of doing this i'm like thinking a lot about the secret history and that it's that kind of idea of like you know six people and they're all like strange in different ways and because it's a shorter book and because it's i don't know the secret history is just a masterpiece i don't feel like that level of really like with these characters in these characters minds but for the for the plot like i think they're interesting enough and they have different enough personalities where we see them experience and kind of act upon these horrible things they have to do differently and i think that's interesting so yeah i'll be continuing to read that now Hello, I'm sat on the floor uh, in the dining room because Alex is watching Squid Game. He's been watching it all day and I don't like it, it's scary. I'm a wimp um, and people keep getting <laughs> killed. Uh, not, not, not a fan. Um, plot twist though, finished this book, did not care for it. Really did not like this book, which is such a shame. Um, I think I last checked in about 160 pages. 
and it's about 340 pages and I yeah did not like it really didn't enjoy the second half of it I was kind of like pushing myself through it it just is a bit God, I'm so shiny it's just like weird not in a good way it's so ridiculous it's so over the top it just goes to weird places like I was saying oh, I'm enjoying how it's like kind of weird in one half and then we're in the university for the other half the one half just got weirder and weirder and like completely unrealistic and annoying um and the university half i just feel like any reveals in that were like really obvious or just a bit predictable and like okay whatever and then the way it all came together like the overarching thing about like the game and the people who were involved in it um and like the characters i just i just did not like it um i feel like loads of stuff wasn't resolved like stuff we got was just like skipped over like maybe i'm being stupid this isn't really a spoiler but our main character jolly and this guy keeps calling him joe and he's like what did you just call me and i was like oh it's gonna be like a big secret like does he know him from his past never brought up again never never brought up again um and yeah like all the characters were just totally unbelievable by the end of it like especially these two characters who were kind of involved i don't know it was just like reading a bit of a fever dream towards the end none of the characters made sense to me none of them were believable and yeah i didn't like it which is a real shame uh, i'd probably give it like a, mm, a two i'm disappointed because this is on like all the lists of like good dark academia books i was like oh maybe i'll get like a really good like underrated recommendation for you but no maybe other people would like this book it moves very quickly i would say but it's just so um annoying i found it erratically paced towards the end um yeah did not did not care for it did not care at all so that's a shame i'm probably gonna pick up another book maybe later on tonight we're gonna go for a roast because you know <laughs> it's not like we've spent enough time uh, eating out this weekend but this is the last weekend that i have for two weeks where i won't be working so like next weekend the weekend after i'll be working like all day saturday all day sunday because it's Durham book festival yeah i'm gonna continue to hide from squid game before we before we go out let's go for a sunday roast pub number one has no roasts left we're trying pub number two hello so we had our roast dinner we actually like walked to a pub in the village and as i said there was no more roasts there, so then we had to walk back to the pub that was on our street. So that was a waste of time, but the roast was delicious, and it's like a really nice, cosy pub. So I'm happy now we're in bed. It's like half past eight because it's a Sunday, and I've got the Sunday scaries, and I'm tired. But I'm going to pick up book numero dos, and I've decided I bought on my Kindle um, My Education by Susan Choi. So this is another one that was coming up in some lists, but that I've never heard anyone talk about, so I think lit hub had it and like a few others and i have read trust exercise by susan troy which is also set in like an academic setting and i'm very conflicted about that book i like the writing i like the vibes i wanted to like it but it was quite an ambitious book quite complex and it didn't like quite land for me but i'm excited to read more by her um and my education sounds even more at my street and it has some like amazing reviews like from like Meg Wollitzer and stuff. It says Regina has been warned about Professor Nicholas long before arriving as a graduate student at his prestigious university. He's said to lie in the dark in his office while undergraduate women read couplets to him like normal. Um, And yeah, it says no one's warned Regina about his exceptional beauty or his charismatic volatile wife. And so I think it's kind of about like an affair they have, but his wife's involved and yeah it's like prestigious university dark gripping and i think i'm excited for it because i think it'll be a lot more literary not to be mean than black chalk and because black chalk was so disappointing i'm hoping this is gonna like mix it up a bit and hopefully this will be the underrated dark academia book that i can recommend so yes i'm gonna start reading that now in bed don't know how much of it i'll read um but yeah we're an udi club put your arm out so you can see we're both in <laughs> both in our udis so yeah good night Hello, happy Monday. It is lunchtime and I am so cold uh, in this house. That's a good thing about working from home, literally in a blanket at lunchtime. And I've been so excited for lunchtime. I've had a really busy morning, but just to pick up my book again because I am loving my education. How much did I read of it last night? I think maybe like just over 25% and I'm obsessed. It's so good. So we're following Regina, who is a graduate student um, at a university in like upstate new york and she moves there she moves in with this guy who becomes like her best friend and she has this professor 
who immediately she's really attracted to and then he asks her to be his TA but he's married and his wife also works at the university and his wife is just about to have a baby and so she becomes his TA and kind of his friend and through that meets him and his wife and kind of spends time with them socially-ish and then an affair begins and I really don't think it's a spoiler it doesn't say it on the blurb but I don't think it's a spoiler because I'm only like 27% in and it's been going on for a while. The affair, at least thus far, is with his wife, not him. And I always find it weird when books kind of, the blurb really made it sound like she was going to have an affair with the professor. And I never know if that's because they're trying to protect like a twist or if books kind of are weird about putting like, making it explicit that there's going to be a sapphic relationship anyway. So yeah, I'm just loving it. It's written so well. It's written very elaborately, I would say, like a lot of long words and kind of complex sentences. But as soon as you get in the rhythm of it, it's just painting such a picture. It is a really descriptive novel. I'd say there's a perfect balance of plot, but like world building's not quite the right word. But as I've been reading it, especially because it is quite atmospheric about place in upstate New York, about like the seasons, you know, when she moves there, it's this like late Indian summer and then it's autumn, then it's winter. I can picture so many of the scenes in this, like I'm reading it and it's so vivid in my mind and it's just making me so immersed in it and enjoying it so much. Uh, I think the characters are really, really well done, like Regina, even just a couple of her friends that she kind of makes. There's the guy that she lives with called Dutra and then there is this man who's like another teaching assistant called Lawrence and they're not like huge characters in it but they're so fleshed out and vivid and interesting and then there's obviously the professor and his wife and yeah I don't know I'm just connecting with this book so much I really really hope that I continue to enjoy it because like I say I'm only 27% in and I would say that now like the affair has begun I have read a lot I have read a lot of books where it's about you know like an affair where one person's married I think it's very well trodden ground but from the blurb although it hasn't served me well necessarily too well too far says it's about like obsession it's quite dark so I'm hoping it does something a bit interesting with like what happens in this affair and where it goes but yes so far absolutely loving it very excited to read it now on my lunchtime got my diet coke obviously got my diet coke got my kindle and gonna have a great lunchtime I feel hello um I just finished work and then I had to have a shower because I wanted to wash my hair tonight instead of in the morning so I'm going to the office tomorrow um, so I was gonna wait till like the evening, but I felt like such a greasy rat all day, even though I had showered this morning, that I washed my hair, so now I'm drippy long stockings. And I still look like a rat, but not a greasy one. Also, I'm like obsessed with sitting at the dining room table alone with no entertainment, just because I haven't had a dining room table for ages because the ping pong table's been up. I got to the 50% mark in my education and I think I'll wait and update at like two thirds, but I do think that I'm gonna end up finishing this book tonight because I usually read loads on a Monday night because we don't do anything and I'm really, really enjoying it. So I was like, oh, what's my third and final book for this video gonna be? Because I think I said at the start, like I haven't, hadn't planned it out. It's kind of taking it as it comes. And I was gonna maybe read If We Were Villains by ML Rio because when I mentioned that I was thinking about doing a dark academia vlog in a video, is this room really echoey by the way? Does that give dark academia vibes, vibes, vibes? I mentioned it in a video, all the comments were like, if we were villains is dark academia, but everyone I know or I watch has hated that book. <laughs> so especially after how much I did not care for this guy, I just don't know if I wanna read if we were villains, but I'm gonna, do something different and leave it up to the hands of fate. I'm gonna post an Instagram story and I'm gonna say, give me your dark academia book recommendations if they're underhyped, underrated, even better. Cause I kinda wanna make this now like a underhyped dark academia reading vlog because I feel like I've never heard anyone talk about black chalk, never heard anyone talk about my education. Um, and either the first book, the first person that replies to the book, I have to read that book or like the most frequent book that comes up. Oh, I think Instagram might be down. My sister just texted me saying Facebook and WhatsApp are down. And obviously Instagram's also, oh, how annoying. Okay, well, I'll post on Instagram when Instagram's back up. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go read my education. Hello, still drippy long stockings and Instagram is still down. I was so excited to be like, oh, let's spice up the vlog. Yeah, that, this is how I'm gonna pick my third video. And then Mark Zuckerberg said, no, bitch, no. Um, and also like WhatsApp's down, Instagram is down, Facebook Messenger's down. Alex has gone to play 
at the driving range. I don't know what people do there. Um, and so I have no one to talk to, but I do have my book. And I'm now two thirds, I don't know why I'm picking up my Kindle, two thirds of the way through my education. Still loving it. I love Susan Troy's writing. I remember really enjoying it in Trust Exercise, but this is miles better than Trust Exercise in my opinion. Like just think the way she does like introspection, because as I say, it's not like we've never read an affair storyline before, but when she's talking about like the machinations of this marriage, the machinations of an affair, having an affair with an older person, having a your first kind of sapphic relationship, being at uni, having children. She just like seamlessly enters the characters' minds and is so interesting. And like, I think what she's saying is just not fresh exactly, but just so like insightful and pertinent. And it's quite funny, especially in the bits about like love and relationships and like the kind of politics and diplomacy of marriage um and the feelings of like lust and obsession because i'm reading on my kindle i don't know how to turn this off you can see where people have underlined it so it'll be like 27 people underlined this line then i'm reading it like yeah that's a good line um so i won't say anything more about the prox i don't think i need to at this point it is pretty plotty though like it feels so slow and because i like still the characters are just so fleshed out so interesting i like love some of them i hate some of them they just they all really make sense to me um it doesn't feel rushed because the writing is still like super rich and detailed and elaborate but this plot here we've got things coming around i wouldn't say it's like dark academia in the traditional sense to be fair i'd say black chalk was more like that not that it was particularly bothered about the academics but it was that kind of like students pushing the boundaries at going into dark worlds this is a lot more of like a dark dramatic novel set at the university so sue me if that's not dark academia but I'm enjoying it and I'm gonna keep reading it. Hello, good morning. The weather is disgusting, absolutely chucking it down. Instagram's back up. So I posted finally my Instagram story and I'll take my camera to work and we'll keep updated on the results. I'll go to Waterstones at some point. Will I be able to like speak to you at work? Probably not because I'll be embarrassed. I also finished my education, which we'll also talk about when I'm alone again. <laughs> Okay, so I finished work um, and one of my really good friends from uni who lives in London is like temporarily moved, temporarily moved to Newcastle to do a course, which is really exciting. So I'm gonna go meet him for a drink. Um, my Instagram experiment hasn't gone totally to plan for reasons I will explain later, but I'm gonna go hit some bookshops. And let's see if we can find my third Dark Academia book. Also I'm walking through the uni cause like my office is, in, is on campus and it, it do be looking pretty dark academia. the weather is simply horrendous and as i mentioned uh one of my best friends from uni who lives in london got like a he's got a new job basically and for six weeks of it has to live in newcastle and i love it because people just don't move to newcastle so we're relishing it so i met him after work for a few drinks and then i was like oh you know i'm a bit hungry let's check the time it was 10 to 10 so no reading done today but my instagram experiment has failed a little bit. Um, I love that I can just like post on Instagram and people reply and it's something I definitely wanna make more of a thing of in my vlogs. But I think in the way that I'm like, oh, I wanna find this underhyped dark academia classic. I just, I'm not sure that exists because I got so many messages being like, I don't have the answer to this, but please let me know like what the results are. And what I ended up getting was a lot of like books I'd read or it was a lot of like books that are very much out of my, typical reading sense, Ninth House, These Violent Delights, like stuff that's YA or, yeah, YA basically, or fantasy. And I don't think, as I've said before, it would be particularly effective for me to read those books because I know I don't really like that genre. So I was like, right, I'll go to Blackwell's and basically have a look for some of these books. And it was like closed early due to a power outage. So that wasn't good. So tomorrow I'm gonna go to Waterstones because I'm in town again for work and I'm just gonna buy something. I wanna tell you about My Education by Susan Troy, which I finished last night. So one of the things I said about Trust Exercise, if you've read Trust Exercise, you'll know what I mean, has like a massive shift in it. And maybe Susan Troy just loves the massive shift because at about, yeah, at about 75%, where I was like, oh, really interested to see where this is gonna go, 
it has like a massive shift we move forward like maybe 15 years in time which i wasn't really expecting it takes us out of that very intense academic setting um and it did throw me off a bit i was like why does susan troy keep doing this where she has you in her grasp and then way closer to the end than you want does something like very different um so you move very much forward in time regina's like in her 30s she's living in new york city and yeah we kind of go from there and like i say it did throw me off a little bit but susan troy is such a good writer and especially in this book the writing is so good that i was kind of won over i didn't really want to be i was like no why have you done this but I still ended up caring, even though it was such a shift and such a jump. And I think particularly in the context of talking about like dark academia, I thought it was very interesting because when we're with Regina as a student, she's in a very dark place. She's so young and naive and obsessive and in love and in lust. And I actually thought the way that that shifts into her being an adult, her priorities being very different was very good. I think that the writing about being older, about having children, about how you frame your old relationships or your previous relationships when you're older was done really well um and i did i did really enjoy that and the writing did like i say suck me in again it's a very sexual book i will say that like there's a lot of sex in it and i think the sex scenes are written really well and yeah that kind of passion and deep kind of introspection really like carried us through towards the end even when we were in a very different space the book i would say ended a lot more sentimentally than I expected and at first I was like oh I'm really not sure that I like this and I'm still not fully sure how I feel about it because after the like dark obsessive spiraling vibes that we had I it really wasn't what I expected but I don't know I'm still not 100% on how I feel about the ending and yeah on the whole like I really did love this book I think if we'd stayed in the present or like in the university timeline I think this book could have been a five star. I think that the shift did throw me off, but the writing was impeccable. I would say if you read Trust Exercise and you weren't sure, read My Education. Would I recommend it as like a dark academia book? Maybe not ostensibly, but it's set at university for the most part. It's dark-ish. It's just really good, so I really enjoyed it. I am home from work and as we've seen I took a little trip to Waterstones because we needed to get this next book and so I picked up The Plot by Jean Hanf Korolitz. Saw this on a couple of lists or some of her other books because she seems to write in a lot of like academic settings and this is like a twisty thrillery page turner about as far as I know a lecturer at like a prestigious university who steals someone else's work and so it's all like dark and twisty and it definitely has like an academic setting and I've heard that it's like totally unputdownable and really fun and gripping. So I think this could be a good option. Obviously, I won't know how much it's like traditional dark academia until I read it, but I think it's gonna be fun for this video. Um, I also ordered another book, which I think is very much traditional dark academia, but really underrated and I rarely hear people talk about it. That's not arriving until tomorrow. So this is gonna be a long vlog seemingly. I am so looking forward to having a night of doing big fat nothing. I'm so tired to conserve my energy for the big festival weekend um so i think al's gonna go play golf and i'm gonna tuck into this all night um it has a buy one get one half price sticker but i am growing i'm strong and i didn't buy another book because you always think it's such a good deal but is it is it really so yeah oh also this morning my boss came in and she was like oh i've got you a present and i was like what and oh, i'm obsessed she got me so backstory when we went to the women's prize we saw these um because they had like a partnership with this brand and they were selling them and i was like oh my god i want one and she got herself one as well um it's this daphne de Maurier t-shirt it's by the brand like girls on top um and they've done girls on tops sorry and they've done like famous women on t-shirts and then they have like a literary line so i have a daphne de Maurier one and my boss has a different one and we're like we already dress the same every day accidentally so it's like we'll have to really make sure to wear these separately but i love it it's so cool. I can't wait to wear it. Hello. Uh, I'm 100 pages into the plot, so I thought I would update you. I will say uh, the start of this book is set in a university and then it very quickly isn't. But because it's all about like the literary world, publishing, writing, I still feel like it has like 
dark academia vibes okay don't sue me so following a guy called jake who always wanted to be a writer got his first book published and it was like a kind of like a breakout like quite literary um so it wasn't like a massive seller necessarily but he got named in like the new york times as like one to watch like book of the year kind of thing and his second book was really unsuccessful and he's never been able to write one since and at the beginning of the novel teaches at a like kind of not even very prestigious university on a creative writing course and so he meets this guy like a new co cohort of students comes in and there's this guy who's like really he's a dick really he's like super obnoxious and he's like my book is amazing i'm not telling anyone about it because like you can't ruin this book like whatever i do like this book is gonna make me like millions and millions and jake's like okay bro he's like maybe you need to like lower your expectations it's not all about the money and the success you know it's really hard to get a book like that like just focus on writing the best novel you can the guy's like i'll tell you my plot so he tells him the plot of this novel and jake's like yeah damn that is actually the best thing i've ever heard in my life so he kind of continues to be less and less successful still trying to hang on to this idea that he's a writer even though he hasn't really written anything in years and then one day he googles this boy because he's thought about this story like this plot of this book for ages and he's dreaded it getting published and this guy becoming famous he googles him turns out he's dead and so obviously he steals it writes it becomes a literary sensation selling loads of copies that's basically the blurb that is basically where we are at this point at 100 pages and i was like oh they keep talking about this like huge twist like this amazing book like blah blah blah, blah. and i was like they're never going to tell us what the book's about and i kind of get that because you're trying to like keep this idea that it's like the best book ever but then actually as i got to whatever i'm on now like page 95 it's given you like the first chapter or an excerpt from this book that jake's end up writing which he calls crib so i'm like oh are we actually gonna get to read the book because that's quite fun i will say so far it's been very much like just what was on the back so it's been like interesting i think it's well written it is um for a book that had been described to me as like super pacey compulsive unputdownable i think the writing is actually quite like reflective you know you can enjoy his kind of thoughts about writing and storytelling as well as the plot but like i say the plot thus far has been what i knew from the back and other than that all i knew is like it's unputdownable twisty and at the minute it feels very like yeah well he's obviously gonna steal it he's obviously gonna get found out so i'm interested to see where it goes hey what's up hello i now only have 100 pages left of the plot i am racing through it as advertised it is a book that is like very just quick to read and unputdownable it's not it's not really dark academia i was still a bit of a false dream there because we have already moved away from the university setting and it's just kind of like a a thriller with literary vibes so yeah the guy knows that someone knows that he's still in the book and i was a bit like oh it was kind of annoying me a little bit just because one of the things i really dislike in books is like someone trying to prove their innocence or like someone who is guilty but it's like they know that someone knows they're guilty and it's just that sort of cat and mouse and they're really paranoid and they're thinking about it all the time i don't know i guess it's a good vehicle for like moving on the plot but for me it very quickly stagnates and i just want to be like okay either deal with it move on or admit it i don't know it's just something that annoys me but now our main character is kind of becoming a bit obsessed with like who it could be and therefore is delving into the life of this student that died and that's why it's getting a bit interesting a bit interesting it is interesting i am enjoying it there's still a lot of that like lying keeping up appearances because he's keeping this big secret but the life of this guy who he stole the story from is really interesting and it's kind of intersecting with the novel like we keep getting bits of this novel and the way that's coming together that's pretty interesting and the novel parts are kind of heating up so got 100 pages left gonna go to bed and i think i'll just finish it it'll have to be like a big ass twist to make me like really love it i think i was expecting like i don't know the things i'd heard about it was like oh my god like so twisty and there really hasn't been any twists yet or even any like big reveals yet i would say so maybe the last 100 pages is like explosive good morning i am working from home today and i'm also wearing my daphne de Maurier top because whenever i get something new like i have to wear it immediately and also i'm gonna film a video later so that'll be cute i finished the plot last night I didn't really like this book, which is a shame since I've literally owned it for about 16 hours um, and already read it and didn't really like it. 
I think in part this book was just like too hyped up to me by the person who I know who'd read it and so it kind of maybe set like an unrealistic expectation of what this was going to be like especially in terms of like the twists and the turns I would say it was like a very compulsive readable book it's very fast paced you want to know what's going to happen clearly I read it all in one night but just didn't really do it for me there was like a couple of twists one big one really like one big thing that the whole book is going towards which I would say was obvious almost immediately like as soon as how do I say this without spoilers the prevalence of one character in the story that was otherwise unimportant and made it very very obvious that that person was somehow involved and as we got closer and closer to the end it was more and more obvious to everyone apart from well to the reader but not to our main character and so you're just waiting for him to kind of join up the dots i thought the the idea of the plot that was this book was more interesting but yeah i just didn't it wasn't really um we got a bit of time for it there was some interesting twists and turns i mean that's maybe even generous there was some twists and turns in there or there was a nice like unraveling of what that story was about but it was really overshadowed by like clearly it's gonna be this person and yeah not my favorite i keep like just reading i don't know if like the more of these kind of thrillers i read the less i like them like in a short space of time but then the more times i read a thriller that i'm like that was disappointing i want to read a thriller that was really great i feel like it's been so long since i've actually had a thriller where i'm like oh my god that twist or like oh my god that was satisfying at the end so that was a shame and it wasn't even really dark academia so what a what a success for me personally it's interesting though that um i'm reading this at the time that that nyt articles come out about like the bad art friend and like the kidney and like this idea of ownership over a story and like who gets to tell a story you know did our main character steal a plot or like you know if you've been inspired by someone's idea for a plot and they die like is that stealing um so if you haven't read that article or seen all of the stuff around it that probably won't make sense but yeah i thought that it's kind of an interesting question but yeah not my favorite 2.5 i guess because it was fine to read so i will be working today and hopefully my next book will arrive hello it's much later now i've had a hellish day at work a glass of wine filmed a video and my final books arrived which i'm very excited about because she is beautiful it is sleepwalking by meg Wollitzer. this was a hard little book to track down because it was published like it was her debut it was published ages ago and it's out of print like waterstones didn't stock it which is why i went to blackwells and then i had to order it off amazon but she's here and yeah i'm really really excited about this i can't believe it took me this long to like think of this book because i think this is a very clearly literary but dark academia book um and also meg Wollitzer was like all over the blurbs for my education by susan Troy, so she should have occurred to me earlier but she didn't and it says published when she was only 23 wow and written while she's a student at brown sleepwalking tells the story of three notorious death girls so called on this uni campus because they dress in black and are each absorbed in the work and suicide of a different poet sylvia plath and sexton and a poet that meg wallet's made up and it says it's about obsession a shared fascination with poetry and death and about how yeah you kind of move on and leave those obsessions behind it says that one of the characters past begins to shift un uncomfortably and even disturbing me so this is like peak dark academia it's at a university it's about people being obsessed with academia and literature and it sounds dark af um and yeah i've heard i think two people on booktube i'm pretty sure steffi read this and hated it so hopefully i'll feel differently and i think someone else i've seen talk about it but it's definitely not one of the like classic dark academia books that comes to mind I have high hopes for this it's the last book let's read it i'm going out for dinner so see how far i can get into it before i go out for dinner hello i read the first 50 pages of sleepwalking but then i felt sleepy um so i got changed because i wanted to copy what alex was wearing because he's wearing a t-shirt this color and now we're going out to meet our friends for dinner whirlwind a whirlwind a whirlwind of a day um went out last night as you saw for dinner and it was delicious i've never been to that place before it's pretty new and they have like a different like food kind of truck outside and then they like you pick up your food you eat it inside the bar and it was like a caribbean place uh so i had like jerk chicken and gravy and like um 
spice chips and mac and cheese. Oh, it was delicious. But then we had a few too many drinks. Um, it was a bit crazy everywhere last night because Newcastle finally got rid of my Mark. Mark? I cannot speak. Newcastle finally got rid of Mike Ashley. It's very emotional experience for all the Toon fans out there, of which I am not one. Um, and so everyone was just packed with people like in Newcastle shirts, like hugging each other, even just like in the pub in the village. Anyway, so I was a bit hungover this morning and then I've had like such a busy day at work because the festival starts tomorrow and it's just digital. Um, so I'm just going into the office all day to like make sure the digital events are running. But yes, it was a stressful day and then I had to have a lie down on my lunch break. Um, but we're here now, ready for a nice relaxing Friday night. But last night I started reading um, Sleepwalking and I got about 50 pages in. It's reading quite quickly. Um, it's about 200 and just under 250 pages, but I felt like I wasn't really reading at all like in that 50 pages. So I do think it's gonna be quite a quick read. I have read one of the Meg Willitzer, which was the female persuasion, which I had mixed feelings about. That felt like a very long book. It's definitely an interesting setup and I'm looking forward to continuing reading it. We're at this, I think, fake university um, somewhere on like the East Coast of America and we're following three girls who meet at uni and kind of bond over the fact that they're all obsessed with dead female poets and they like dress really like you know they're those like goth girls one of them loves sylvia plath one of them one of them loves anne sexton and one of them loves this fictitious poet called something um lucy asher and that's claire who is our main character so yeah there's these kind of like three girls who are all like all troubled and blah 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 it's mainly claire we're following and she starts a relationship like at the start of the novel with a boy at college who's like obsessed with her and again, that felt a little bit like we were just in it. There wasn't a huge amount of build up. Um, and so it's quite like an angsty love story because she's like this very troubled girl. It's obviously very angsty because they're obsessed with these poets and the fact they're dead and they're kind of obsessed with death, like as an idea, they're called the death girls. Um, and Claire kind of talks about before she came to college, the grief she's dealt with in her life because her brother died. Um, and also then the grief she felt for this poet who died so yeah i think it's going to be like an exploration of grief i'm interested to see where this relationship goes because at the minute it's quite like angsty and cutesy but the back said it was going to be quite dark and yeah it's definitely got the dark academia vibes a lot about poetry a lot about death a lot about college so i am going to keep reading this now we got a curry i am so hungry i had my curry and it's now half past nine and i'm in bed because this bitch tired but i am now like 140 pages into sleepwalking i've got like 100 pages left uh, so i'll probably read a bit more tonight and then i'll just check in with you at the end of the vlog when i finish that uh but thus far um quite a lot has happened really well kind of nothing's happened kind of a lot's happened we get like the perspective of this poet we kind of get more about like the poet's life pre the one claire's obsessed with obviously pre her committing suicide and like the perspective of her parents which is interesting um it's not like, a it's a pretty quiet book, I'd say. Like, there's nothing massively dramatic happening. It's definitely like meditation and reflection on grief, but it's just written in a really nice way. Like, I just like Meg Wallitz's writing and I like this sort of quiet moments of these parents dealing with like abject grief. Um, and then basically Claire kind of comes into their life and she is, Claire's an interesting one because I think that this book really well captures, captures really well that sort of like, teenage apathy young you know adolescent young adulthood um angst and kind of it's interesting juxtaposing like claire who is just grieving this person she never has known and just being very like against everything and so sad and obsessive with like the parents of someone who knew this person but then i think it's saying some quite interesting things about that kind of uneven relationship and but also like the way we experience grief diff differently and I like reading books about um like imagined famous people well not famous people but like imagined artists and stuff so that's interesting I think I'm gonna end up saying like this book's too short because there's only 100 pages left and there's a few balls in the air like there's the dead girl aspect of it which hasn't been a huge amount about there's a relationship with Julian which I thought was gonna be a big part of it and again we haven't had a lot of that and now Claire's like in the life of the parents so I think I don't know I'm interested to see like what the last 100 pages are going to do I feel like this book could have been longer um because I'm quite interested in all of these different aspects it would be nice to dive into them more so yeah there are my thoughts on sleepwalking I feel like I'm not being very uh eloquent because I am tired but then also just because I feel like I don't know there's a lot in here but it's not like super meaty if that makes sense so yeah let's chat when I've eventually actually finished it 
Okay, let's wrap up this vlog. I look shattered because I am. So I finished reading Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer and I really enjoyed this book. It's a very quiet story, I would say. And I think maybe you can tell it's a debut, not because the writing wasn't good. Like I really like Meg Wolitzer's writing and I preferred this to The Female Persuasion, which is one of her much later ones. But I think that maybe you can tell it's written by someone quite young. I would say this book is very concerned with like a adolescence, an early adulthood, apathy, um, a kind of feeling of restlessness, a kind of preoccupation with death, obviously. And yeah, I guess a kind of, you know, we're following Claire and these two other girls who are obsessed with these women who've been successful and have been great artists but have died and I think that kind of yeah that angst and that sort of dramatic like all these girls are type fours on the Enneagram is what I would say like that want to be dramatic and to be different I think Claire is kind of not a particularly I didn't love Claire as like the main character of this book because I think I'm not massively interested in reading about that kind of really like dramatic uh i want to be like special and i don't know that those sort of vibes but then interestingly there's also some older characters in this book because we really follow laura who's the poet who died's parents ruminations on parenthood um and kind of being at a later stage in your life i thought they were written really really well so part of me is like yeah you can tell it was written by someone young because of the young characters meg wallace was 23 when she read this book when she wrote this book but then also i think the older characters were done really well and that was my they were my favourite parts of this book. Their feelings on grief. Um, Claire is also grieving, but I think the exploration of losing a child and the grief that Lucy Ash's parents are going through and their kind of journey throughout that were the bits that really, really stuck out to me and I thought were really beautifully done, very moving, very understated, but really, really effective. I definitely think that this book could have been longer for me because I think there were aspects that weren't as delved into um particularly like the death girls so the other two girls who are obsessed with poets i would have liked more from them i think they were maybe just kind of not a gimmick that's not the right word but they were kind of in there and that's kind of what draws you in but the relationships there i think could have been delved into more also the relationship is kind of like insta lovey and i didn't really believe it like julian and claire again that those bits for me weren't as effective they didn't really work that much for me but on the whole I did really enjoy it. I liked the kind of moody feel. Um, I liked, again, I would have liked more like at the university. And I think maybe if you read this when you were younger, you would really connect to the parts of it that I didn't connect to as much, perhaps. So let's do a little roundup. I would say that in terms of what is the most like dark academia as we might think of it, the order would be Black Chalk is definitely the most like that kind of nebulous genre of books that you read then i would say sleepwalking then i would say my education which i read on my kindle and then finally i would say the plot is the least like that because we're, we're at university the least with my education it's very much at university but it doesn't have the more i guess like thrillery feelings to it this has the moodiness it has the real interest in art and academia but it doesn't really have any like dark thrillery aspect and then this is like a very thrillery mysterious concerned with academia concerned with you know students pushing themselves to their limits so that's the order in terms of the most dark academic but in terms of my enjoyment definitely my education i like the most i would say that's like a strong four star for me then i would say sleepwalking choir but again so well written then i would say the plot which i don't really love but it was like pacey and fast and fun and then finally black chalk which as you may have seen i did not care for so that has been my little experiment into trying to find some underhyped dark academia. Was it successful? Who can say? Maybe not, but I had a lot of fun, read some interesting books, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please do leave your dark academia recommendations down below, or if you've read any of these books, I'd absolutely love to hear about it. Obviously, I would also love if you subscribed. My Instagram, my Storygraph will be linked down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!